Fine's huge blunder. For what the, an insane. Situation. And Wesley, no need to play that quickly, Amon. He had 20 seconds on the clock. He has yeah. to be aware that these tricks, they're ever present in the end game. Kudos, of course. Nihal squeezing every opportunity and bringing this match to within a point. Huge win. Yeah, he got that extra pawn out of nowhere. Like, yeah, I thought it was just going to be draw, 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 like trade pawn for pawn, but mm -hmm. he found a sneaky way to get an extra pawn. And that's the step in the right direction. Like, Wesley's not making that blunder if that doesn't happen. So Nihal does that. He shuffles a bit and he sort of builds up Wesley into this false sense of security. Like, hey, there's nothing wrong. It's just going to be shuffling draw. And then, of course, he has one last trick at the end. Yeah, that's that's time scrambling 101. It's what you said is exactly true. The the false sense of security. That's and that's where the the overly reckless pre-move start because you you feel like your opponent's never gonna do anything. Yeah. And it is the job of the truly masterful bullet flare uh category that Nihal belongs to to sense exactly the moment when you have succeeded in lulling your opponent to sleep. And that's where you create the threat. Mm -hmm. Okay, this reminds me, this gives me big time Carlson <laughs> Nepo vibes. Yeah, <laughs> this is like it's just major big world championship vibes. Oh, yeah. But Wesley clearly, Bishop C8 is not a good sign. I mean, he's lost the tempo on that move. White has the A file. Yeah, Wesley's E4 games have been tremendous for him. They have. <laughs> he needs to keep playing them, that's for sure. I mean, and... it's almost like he did an E4 course. Yeah, you know, know. It, it, it get that, <laughs> and it's almost like he doesn't tilt either. And nope. you know, he just lost an absolutely brutal game, and here he is playing tremendously as white right afterwards. <laughs> he really is, like, basically impervious to tilt. Probably <laughs> so more so than anyone I've seen. Because I've he never, still benefits yeah. from momentum. So it's like, you benefit from the momentum, but you don't, like, tilt? <laughs> it's crazy. It's the best of both worlds. I don't understand it. So 92, 93 is is the traditional idea okay now uh, the plan that i see most commonly is c3d4 trying to basically go after these weak pawns and break open the pawn shell mm -hmm. oh, oh. I mean, that is a nasty move <laughs> yep this, this is nice is... got a trade Another positional masterpiece in the making here. D4 looking might attempting. They were but waiting patiently. to see D4. We might see knight D8, knight F7 by black. Just just nice to get the knight out of the way. And right. knight F7 still covers the center, and your queen no longer has to protect the knight. Okay. Nihal saying, you know what? You're not going to play D4. I'm playing D5. This weakens E5, but changes the course of the game a little bit. I don't know how I feel about it. I, yeah, I feel like um, maybe it's just not my style to go d5 uh, because it's definitely a, a fine move, but very loose position now. e5 pawn constantly needs attention, and uh, Black's even infiltrating with rook b3 now. And at first, I was skeptical. I thought something like queen a4, very loosey goosey, but that queen on d7 is holding the knight uh, and, and controlling a lot of these squares in the center. But still, Black's position is so precarious here. Yeah, it really is. King H7. No. Oh. Wait, is there knight d4? This is a I think there's knight d4. And it just looks good. There's no... It, you're just going to have double pawns at the end, which is advantage. Yeah, white's worse. Oh. Niho missing believe... a big chance there. I can't believe both players didn't see that. Yeah, let me just very, very quickly. Knight d4. The queen hangs. This is a... You know, this is as old as the hills, this idea. Knight takes yeah. d7, black is better in the end game. Always a good tactic to be on the lookout for. It'll pay dividends for you. And now Wesley choosing the moment to strike with d4, precisely at the moment where black's rook is kind of off sides, he tries to open up the position. Yeah, I'm liking the way Wesley has been playing this. Um, position's getting loose. Nihal, if he ever takes on e4, I think he's just worse um, very clearly yeah. after knight takes, so... Tough decision. If he takes on d4, c takes d4, and the whole Ooh. c file is open. So I don't think he can do anything. He sort of has to sit there and... Ooh. Yeah, he goes for this. So he wants queen takes c7, takes, takes, and maybe d takes c4 there. Wow. Knight Great D2. presence of mind. What about Bishop d6? 
Yeah, and then check and take on e4, and, and my rook covers c1. Oh, right? rook is covering c1, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> and of course, we're going to liquidate into another weird endgame. Yeah, yeah. I think Nihal has done a phenomenal job here. He is definitely closer to a draw, given his blockade of the d5 square, than white is to a win. Agreed. And we will have one more game after this one. Yeah, the three plus one portion has been roughly in Wesley's favor here, but only slightly as, as Nihal just came back and won a, an important game, one that Wesley gave up. Well, if Wesley wins this one and then the next one ends in a draw, you know what that means for our smarter chess prediction. Yeah, it's as a much little, as I hate to say it. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous how how much he's right. So how is white going to make progress here? Maybe plant the knight on f5, maybe play h5, although that is quite committal. Yeah, but now Nihal's going to put the rook on d7. <laughs> Black's coming with rook d7 for sure. Yeah. I don't see how you shake. No, shake you got to, uh, you know, knight d5, king e4, if knight back to f6, then king d3, and I think you're improving slightly. Well, slowly but surely, yeah. But maybe king e4, king e6. Right. This idea of going... Uh, okay, knight f6, I think, is a little... I agree. Now the king will swing over to c4. Uh-huh. Bishop f4. Now there is a rook c6 check. It should be 5, rook c6. Yeah, this is annoying. I think it's annoying. The, the king goes to e4, and f4 happens. Yeah. And he's in trouble. Wesley, somehow. And, you know, not doing exactly what he held in the previous game, but... I feel like you can just sense the determination from Wesley. He wants to convert this end game. Okay, rook somewhere, rook a5. Rook a5. Maybe? Exactly. Seven seconds, time is fading. And now the deep on king f5. As long as Wesley doesn't blunder a fork, this should be a pretty straightforward win at this point. This is okay, a beautiful geez. game so far. Yes, it is. F4, not giving up a single pawn. Too good. Rook H6 or King F5 to E4. Yeah, we'll just go Rook H6, Rook H7. Nihal, of course, not giving up. As long as there's a knight, there's a chance. Hey, seriously. <laughs> Rook C7, though, is uh, really going yeah. to end those chances. But yeah, F5 is good Push enough. Push the pawn, F6. No danger whatsoever. Rook c3, knight f4, king f6, knight d5. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Find the pitfalls. King e7, and look at how the knight is totally dominated by I think rook d3 would have been a little more accurate there. Okay. Nice. And a, wow. another positional masterpiece in a Ray Lopez. How many of these has he played today? It's just, it's just ridiculous to be able to lose a game with the most elementary of blunders um, in a draw.